In this video, we're going to set up NeoVim to be the perfect editor for working with Python. By the end of this guide, you'll have auto suggestions and code completion enabled, encode static analysis, auto formatting on save, and powerful debugging capabilities. To get started, you'll need to make sure you have the latest version of NeoVim installed. At the time of recording, this is version 0.9.1. Download and install that as per the instructions for your operating system. For this video, I'm using macOS, so I'll install NeoVim using Brew. With NeoVim installed, the next step is to add a base configuration to simplify our setup process. My preferred option is NVChad, which provides some powerful plugins and defaults while still allowing a great deal of flexibility for customization. If you have an existing NeoVim configuration, you'll first want to back this up and delete your local NeoVim cache using the following commands. You can then install nvchad by using the following git clone command, which will download it into your NeoVim configuration directory. Once that's done, open up NeoVim and you should be greeted with a prompt asking if you want to install an example configuration. Make sure to type in n as in no, so you start from the same base configuration as I am. After that, you should see the base packages and plugins being installed through the lazy plugin manager. Once that's done, feel free to set your theme to one you prefer. You can do so by opening up the theme switcher using space, T, and H. I'll be setting my theme to the best theme ever, Capuchin. With that done, we're ready to start customizing NeoVim for Python. The first feature we want is to enable code suggestions and autocomplete. We can do this by setting up a language server protocol, or LSP server. There's a number of LSP servers we can use with Python, but we're going to go with PyWrite for this configuration. To do so, we're going to first need to get PyWrite installed on our system. We can do this using either pip or npm, or from within NeoVim using a plugin called Mason. The Mason plugin acts as a package manager for external dependencies that NeoVim uses. The benefit to doing it in Mason is it keeps our configuration as code, which is preferable when compared to installing dependencies ad hoc. To install using Mason, first open up your NeoVim configuration files in NeoVim by changing it over to the config directory and typing nvim inside. Once NeoVim is loaded, you can then open up the tree view by pressing Ctrl and N. Next, we're going to need to create a new file which will keep track of our NeoVim plugins. We'll create this in the lower slash custom directory of our configuration. Once we've navigated here, we can create the file by pressing the A key and entering a name for the file in the prompt. Let's call this plugins.lua. Once that's created, you can open it up by pressing enter on the file. This file is where we'll define any plugins that we want to add to NeoVim, or to extend any config from the plugins that nvchad installs. As Mason is installed as part of nvchad, we'll be overriding the options here to install PyWrite. In this file, let's define an empty Lua table called plugins, and then add a line underneath to return it. Next, open up this table and add an entry for Mason. Inside of this entry, we'll add a block for our options, which will define our ensure installed table. The contents of this table defines the dependencies that Mason should manage for us. Let's add PyWrite to this list. Next, we want to make sure we import this file whenever we load NeoVim. To do this, head over to the chadrc.lua file in the custom directory. If you don't have this file, be sure to create it. Inside of this file is where we're going to load our custom plugins. To do so, add in the following line which will tell nvchad where our custom plugin file lives. With the file saved, go ahead and restart NeoVim to reload our configuration. Once you're back inside of NeoVim, call the mason install all command to download and install our new dependency. After mason is finished, we can go ahead and configure PyWrite. Heading back over to our custom plugins file, let's add a new entry to our custom plugins table. We're going to override another plugin from nvchad called neovim slash nvim lsp config. This plugin is created by neovim and provides some default configurations for use with lsp servers. Inside of this entry, add a function for the config and add the following lines to both import the default nvchad lsp config and also a new custom file we're about to create. Next, we're going to create a new file in our custom directory under configs slash lsp config dot lua. You can do this in NeoVim by navigating to the tree view, pressing the A key and typing out the full file path. Once you've created the file, open it up in your editor. This file is where we're going to store the configuration for our LSP servers. First, we need to import the existing nvchad LSP configuration in order to obtain the onattach and capabilities functions. These are used to define our editor's capabilities and to perform a callback for when our LSP server is attached. Next, we import the LSP config plugin which is what we'll use for setting up PyWrite. 
To set up PyWrite, we call the lspconfig.pyWrite.setup function and pass in our options. In these options, we'll set the onAttach and capabilities values to the functions that we imported earlier, and we'll set the file type that we want the LSP server to load on to be Python. This should be all we need for a default setup with PyWrite. Let's go and check it out with some Python code. Here I have a Python function to generate prime numbers. As I start typing, we can see PyWrite provides some code suggestions for use with our list. As well as this, PyWrite will also provide some inline messages whenever we have errors in our code. This suggests that our LSP config is working as expected, which we can validate using the LSP info command. Here we can see that PyWrite is attached to our current Python buffer. Nice. The next feature we're going to add is static analysis and linting for our Python code. Now we could just change from using PyWrite to using Python LSP server, which has a number of static analyzers built in. However, I believe it's more educational and extensible to show how to do this using the null ls plugin instead. Null ls is a NeoVim plugin that enables non LSP tooling, such as formatters and linters, to have an LSP interface. Null ls is a really powerful plugin for language tooling. For our Python configuration, we're going to use two tools with null ls mypy for static type checking and rough for faster Python linting. There are a number of other Python tools that work with null ls, so be sure to check out the built ins documentation on GitHub to see if there's any others you'd like to use. The link is in the description. To get started, let's add an entry for null ls in our custom plugins.lua file. We'll set the file type to be Python and add in a block for our custom options. As this configuration can get a little heavy, we'll add our options into another file. So let's require our custom.configs.nullls file and return it here. Now we can create this new file in our custom configs directory called nullls.lua. Once that's done, open it up and inside we'll define an empty table called ops and return it. Now we need to import the nullls package in order to use the built-in sources. After that, we'll add the sources we want to our sources table in the options. Let's add an entry for both mypy and rough with the two following lines. Now we just need to make sure both of these tools exist on our system. Let's go ahead and do this using Mason. Jumping back over to the custom plugins Lua file, we can add both mypy and rough to our ensure installed list in our Mason entry. Now, if we run the Mason install all command, we should see a window open up with our new dependencies being installed. If this doesn't work for you, you may need to restart NeoVim. Once that's done, we can test out our new linters. Over in our Prime's Python code, we should be able to see any inline messages for any code that violates our linting rules. We can trigger this by adding an unused variable, which Ruff will detect and throw a warning for. We can also trigger an error from MyPy by passing an invalid type as the argument to our Prime's function. Very cool. The next feature to add is auto formatting which will reorganize and format our code whenever we save. We can add auto formatting to NeoVim using null ls and the black auto formatting tool for Python, which formats code to the PEP8 standard. If you prefer a different style for auto formatting, fortunately there are other options provided by null ls. Be sure to check in the built-in sources documentation to see which one you want to use. To get started with adding in our auto formatter, we first need to install black on our system. This is probably pretty familiar by now, but we can do so by adding it to the mason ensure installed list. Once added, we can then call the mason install all command to download and install it. Now we can add black to our sources list in our custom null ls config file. This should be all we need for a basic setup. If we go back to our Python primes code, we can test this out. mvchad provides a simple mnemonic key binding for running any attached auto formatters manually. By typing space F and M, if we run this, we'll see our code is formatted according to the PEP8 style. This is nice and all, but as humans are terrible at remembering things, it's preferable to set this to automatically format on save. We can set this up pretty easily in NeoVim. To do so, head back over to the null ls config file. Here we want to define a new auto group for our auto formatting auto command. Then we'll add an onAttach method to our options, which will make use of this order group and define a pre-save hook for our buffers, which will run the vim lsp format command. Now let's jump on back over to our code and add in some bad formatting to test this out. When we go ahead and save using colon w, we should see the file automatically format. Nice. The last feature we want to add is a debugger so that we're able to test, run, and debug Python code from within NeoVim. 
To achieve this, we're going to use a plugin called NVIM DAP, which stands for Debug Adapter Protocol. This plugin allows us to connect NeoVim to a number of different external debugging tools. As we're setting up NeoVim for Python, we'll also need to add another plugin called NVIM DAP Python, which provides an extension to DAP in order to communicate with the DebugPy debugger. Let's add both of these by heading back to our custom plugins file and adding in an entry for both NVIM DAP and NVIM DAP Python. In the NVIM DAP Python entry, let's specify the file type to load this plugin for as Python and also add a table for our plugin's dependencies with an entry of nvimdap. This means that whenever our nvimdap python plugin is loaded, then nvimdap will be loaded as well. Next, add in a config function to the nvimdap python entry and add in the following line, which points to the virtual environment path of our debugpy instance. Then call the dap python setup function with this path. Finally, we just need to make sure we have debugpy installed on our system. We can do this by adding an entry to Mason in the ensure installed list. After doing so, make sure to call the Mason install all command. With that, we have a basic debugger setup that we can use, but I think it's worth adding in another plugin to level up the debugging experience in NeoVim. That plugin is called NVimDAP UI, which provides visual elements to make inspecting values and working with debug commands an absolute joy. Let's go ahead and add this to our plugins table and set up nvimdap as a dependency. Next, we'll want to add a configuration function which will set up the UI to automatically load in response to debugging events. Make sure to copy the following lines as I have. You can also find a link to my configuration in the description if copying is too much. All that remains is to add in the nvimdap UI as a dependency of our nvimdap Python plugin so that the UI is also loaded whenever we load a Python file. With that, we have all of the plugins we need, but there is one final thing we should do. To make working with the debugger easier, you can add some custom mappings to NVChad in order to set breakpoints and to run debugpy. To do this, first create a new file called mappings.lua in the custom directory. Inside of this file, define an empty Lua table called m and return it. Now add a new field to this table called dap, which we'll use to store any custom mappings associated with the nvimdap plugin. In this table, we'll set the value of plugin to be true, which means these mappings will only exist when we explicitly load them. Next, add the following lines to specify that we want this mapping to work only on normal mode, as defined by the n field. Then we can add our mapping, which is defined by the leader or space key, followed by d and b. You can remember this mnemonically as debug breakpoint. This mapping will call the dap toggle breakpoint command for us. The next mapping we want to add is for running the nearest test case in our Python code. To do this, we need to add another entry to our m table called dap underscore Python. We'll also set the plugin value of this entry to be true and define a mapping for normal mode. This mapping will be for space dpr, which stands for debug Python run. This mapping will load the nvim dap Python package and call the test method function. With our mappings defined, the last thing we need to do is go ahead and load them. Jump on over to the chadrc.lua file and import the mappings file and assign them to the end table. Next, head back over to our plugins.lua file and add a config function block to our nvim dap entry, which we will use to load the dap mappings. We'll do the same thing again in our nvim dap python config block and add a line in to load the dap python mappings. With that done, we should be complete. Finally, let's go ahead and test this out. Back over in our prime code, let's go ahead and install the Python language for tree sitter. This is required by nvimdap to better navigate and understand the syntax of our code. Once that's done, we'll need to add in some tests in order to run our debugger. I'm going to generate these tests using AI with a secret command. If you're interested in knowing how I did this, don't worry, I'll be showcasing in another video. With our tests generated and moved to the correct file, let's go ahead and use our new mapping of space D and B to set a breakpoint, which you can see is set by the B next to the line number. Then we can use the mapping of space D, P and R to run our tests. As you can see, once our breakpoint is hit, a number of panels are opened up, which is part of nvimdap UI. We can use these panels for inspecting our local variables or for controlling our debugger by stepping over lines of code continuing until the next breakpoint or just stopping execution. 
With that, we have turned NeoVim from a basic text editor into a powerful and configurable IDE for working with Python. If you have any other languages you'd like to see me do in this series, then please let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.